Hey everybody, Dan the Wolfman here, and today I'm going to be breaking down Jesse and Camp's karate skills and why, unfortunately, they're no good. And why your karate or insert martial arts skills might be no good, and people like Rokus's skills might be no good, and hopefully it will help you out. I'm a martial arts master with four black belts that's trained my entire life in multiple styles, fought pro in MMA, fought in two Daido Juko Kudo World Championships. Here you see my four and a half hour highly rated combative street jiu-jitsu DVD available on BJJ Fanatics if you want to learn how to defend yourself. I have a lot of real world experience with a lifetime of bouncing and arm guard work and traveling around the world, getting into uh, certain self-defense incidents and things like that. So I suggest you check it out. I don't want to be too mean. Tonight uh, on Bellator, in just a little while, Jesse's brother, Oliver, who I really like, and I talked to him on Facebook, Oliver Enkamp, who is a fighter, fights in Bellator, and it's on the same card as you see here. I think he's the main event of the prelims that are free, and, and fighting on the same card as Leota Machida. Now, I sparred Leota Machida and traded with him and Chinzo for three months at Black House, basically pretending to be Ryan Bader for his first fight, against Ryan Bader. Chinzo Machida himself, who went five and three in MMA, was able to make his karate work really well. In fact, if you see here in his fourth MMA fight that he won by knockout, he did the throat shove anti-cage tactic, throat shove turnaround to get off the cage and, light, and then last second almost turned it into the head twist and bailed, got off the cage, they separated and boom, flying knee knockout. It was really amazing. You see it in multiple videos. Even uh, Jorge Masvidal has a knockout video. Um, it's put in there and, uh, and other videos. So, But he used my cage tactic get around. So Chinzo Machida, Lyoto Machida, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, uh, Thompson um, but also people forget about my friend Katsunori Kakuno. Went 21-8-2. He's still been doing some exhibition fights and things of that nature. And Garujima, which has really weird style for style rules, plus push-outs, really interesting stuff. He was very successful with his karate, especially before he changed his style, when he used to fight this uh, style. And I trained with him. Uh, I did grappling with him in 2009 at TK's dojo before I um, went back to training that night at the Daido Juko headquarters. And we grappled, but we also talked about his uh, ball kick or crescent kick, he called it, which kicked people in the liver, destroyed their liver, won a lot of knockouts that way with the angled, like angled Taekwondo 45 kick, but with the ball of his foot, like a Taekwondo or Hapkido fighting round kick. Um, he would hit people in the liver with that. I said, how did you break your toes? He showed me on the heavy bag because well, I've broken my toes lots of times training it. Um, so that gives you a little insight into a mindset, which is very important. Are you a fighter or are you not a fighter? Guys, if you want to learn more about good karate, what I've taught off and on in my life, karate go jujitsu, empty hand, hard and soft style. That's why I dubbed it karate go jujitsu, even though I never trained in goju karate. And jujitsu still shows my Brazilian jujitsu background. Karate go jujitsu and look at my sparring there and my sparring rules. I think you would find it a big benefit to a lot of people out there that train traditional martial arts and you want to be able to make things work. As I set this up, let's take a look at my second MMA fight where I was able to make my Taekwondo skills effective here. You see the sliding side kick to, uh, side kick to the leg, sliding side kick to the chest. See my intention going forward, power. A lot of people that even trained in a lifetime, and I'm not trying to be mean to Jesse, but if you don't have intention, if you don't have confidence, if you don't have a focus and you're not looking at and through your opponent, you don't have anything. These guys are leaning back, him and Rokas, both leaning back, doing lead roundhouse kicks with absolutely no power, no setup with their hands and things like that. Here's some footage from the first Dido Juco World Championships, and we're going to get into... Look at my round kick. Look at my uppercut. Uh, my, my chain punch, a straight blast. Everything had power. Okay, now let's get into Jesse. So you are either a fighter or you're not one born to an extent, but it can also be developed. Let's look at one more thing that I thought Jesse would use on his page someday, and I've written all over that. My double chain punch. The best one ever landed in real sparring against the pro champion and a main fighter. Look at that double chain punch. You see there's intention, there's power, there's base, there's balance. There's things that these other martial artists are missing. 
Uh, now, I did make a bad video about Jesse two years ago to the day I just found out, which really wasn't appropriate. And I kind of feel bad about, but I was in lockdown and everything else. And he did make an apology on my page that was very nice. I don't know if that's actually him. And even when I talk to Oliver, if it's them or if their mom handles all the social media, I want them to do well. I like Jesse's channel. I like that he gets people into martial arts. I like that he makes people excited. Okay. But karate good or karate no good. Okay. And to me, that means real fighting ability. Now, he is like a forums champion, done really well uh, competing in kata. That's great. But do you want to learn fighting from someone that's not a fighter? Do you want to learn even bunkai from someone that's not a fighter? These are things you should be asking yourself. Let's start off here by analyzing the whole whopping 44, 45 seconds of sparring he did with Nada Sensei Seth. So he's bouncing around, and you see why the karate no good is mostly because he's probably Jake, uh, uh, JKF, IKF, <laughs> this jump up and down, bop you on the head, BS style karate, that watered down karate that was in the Olympics. Even his technical karate skills seem to be mostly geared in this kind of tap point sparring. Those round kicks are not powerful, even though he thinks they are. And if you're hitting with the very top of the foot, it's not powerful. You want to hit with the shin. Okay, and I can also slap people in the face really good. My first black belt was in Taekwondo, then Daido Juko uh, Kudo, or Karate, hard for MMA Karate. But you look at his distance, he's too far away. He did a, and now he, let's look, watch this guys. This is the most important part here. So when he was punching earlier and kicking, you see everything is out of distance. It's not the correct Ma yet. Look at that jab there. That wouldn't hit even if Seth didn't put his hand up. It's over a foot away. That kick barely landed. His distance is too great, and he's intimidated by Seth's size, which fear has a lot to do with why him and Rokas are not very good fighters, right? Fear. In his last fight, the guy was also big, bigger than him, and he had fear. Okay. I did a breakdown on Rokas' second MMA loss. And you see that jab was kind of punch, uh, the Suki punch was way too far outside. And now he shies away and acts like he's falling off the mat and calls time, but really it's mentally he couldn't handle the pressure. The little tiny bit of forward pressure that Seth is giving him. And his kick's far too outside. Is he really trying to land? And if you're always practicing for two outside, is it any good? And he shies away and, oh, we're off the mat. Okay, we're done. That was so much fun. That so, was really fun. unfortunately, Whoa. Jesse, that karate no good. Okay. Now, Oliver, I support Oliver's fighting in Bellator. In the seventh fight, I think the second one's going live on Bellator prelims now. Probably won't put this out because I don't want maybe Jesse backstage to get upset and be scrolling and show it to Oliver, and I don't want to mess him up. I should probably post this today, but I'll probably uh, hold off on that or at least till later at night. I might, I might make this a couple days from now. I'll put it Monday or something like that. Now, before we get to his recent MMA fight, which is at least his third, and I have people writing me, my subscribers are writing me saying, break down the fight. And they're like, oh, I think it's his first MMA fight. So, you know, it's bad, but blah, blah, blah. Well, it's actually at least his third and if not more. Okay. At least his third MMA fight, if not more. Now let's look at his second round, which he considered his better round of sparring. So I'm not even going to look at the first round which was worse, which he claims he was trying to do Muay Thai versus the Muay Thai champion in this very late spring. But let's look at when he tries and thinks he's doing well with uh, utilizing karate. So he gets a little bounce going, and watch here, he tries a sweep attempt. I use this sweep a lot, but where's the follow-up left knee to deliver? He even let his opponent get, its back, get his back. I teach that, I use that a lot, but he didn't as set it up with an angle of attack. That sweep is something you have to set up with uh, attack by drawing, as Bruce Lee would say, or as Machida backs up into the left, circling the wrong way appropriately, unlike Rokas uh, in open stance. Anyway, here it's attack by drawing. He didn't get the angle of attack. He's square. You're not going to get the sweep almost ever if you do it square. You have to do it from an angle of attack, then hit it, and then even if they don't, you weave into an over-under and land the follow-up left knee to the liver. You see he gets swept easily there, gets dumped. Now, after a lifetime, decades of experience, there should be more real fighting ability. Again, 
Jesse, I enjoy some of your channel. I enjoy a lot of your videos. I'm happy that you get back sidekick he's happy about. His back sidekicks are normally not very good, not very strong, very telegraphed and not set up. And he's tried them in the MMA and he, like, he thinks that's good. That's no good. That's a horrible back sidekick. Okay, he's kicking. Again, way too far out of range. There's not a mindset of kill. There's not a samurai mindset of one shot, one kill. Okay, there's just not. And so if you feel like you've trained in martial arts and your abilities aren't up to par, it's because of mindset. It's because of fear. It's because of not doing enough sparring where you get punched in the damn face. You cannot have fear and be a martial artist. Not that kind of fear. I mean, you can have a little bit of fear to fuel it a little bit's natural, but these guys are letting fear dominate them. You have to be willing to go in and enter. Arini, you have to go in with your punches. You have to be willing to go forward and attack like a samurai with a sword. you got to be able to land that punch. If you're punching and kicking outside of range, especially with no setup, you're not going to do good in real fighting, in real self-defense, or MMA, as we'll see. Okay, let's go on. To, this is his first MMA fight, he says, and he references a recent cage fight in it. And yet we've never seen that video as far as I know, and I'm looking at his channel, and I went on his playlist and stuff. As far as I know, I'm not wrong. I think he's had at least three losses in MMA. Amateur. Um, he sure. Finished the fight. If I remember correctly. Uh, yeah, he starts working something. And he gets Look, put in the armor. There wasn't much guys. very good. There wasn't good karate. There wasn't good kicks. There wasn't good distance. There was some decent knees from the clinch and getting taken down over and over again. And that's it. So he always acts like he's not training MMA. And his recent video, he's like, well, I trained for 30 days. Well, if your first MMA fight was at least a couple of years ago and you've had at least, I think, three, you can't keep saying, well, I'm not really doing it and pretend you're doing it to make a YouTube video. And, well, it's okay. I suck. No, it's really not. And so you should be following YouTubers that have good skill. Now, if I wanted to uh, get good at kata competitions, I'm sure I would go to one of Jesse's seminar to get good at that. But even bunkai uh, kata applications for self-defense, if you're not good at fighting, you're not good at fighting. If you train decades in martial arts, you should be good at fighting and self-defense. Okay, so now let's break down this uh Video. I should have made this last week, but I've been very sick for the week. Today's the first day I've got a little bit of breath uh, where I can make the video. So let's look at his recent MMA fight. And here we go. And right away the guy shoots, he sprawls, and gets taken down. Oh, we're just seeing clips, I guess. That's always interesting. Uh, maybe these are highlight clips in the beginning. Getting taken down, getting taken down, getting smashed. Um See a bad standing guillotine attempt that he does twice. Now, there's Oliver. I like Oliver a lot. I hope he wins tonight. And fighting on the undercard of Machida, that's quite an honor. And I always root for the karate guy, the Kedartaka. And guys, look at my Karate Go Jiu-Jitsu playlist. And look at my DVD, Combatters of Street Jiu-Jitsu DVD on BJJ Fanatics. It will really help you able to defend yourself. He's getting kicked in the calf there. That one, he lifted over it. I was showing calf kick combos and calf kick defense back in 2012. And UFC commentators weren't talking about it in 2017. I did, of course, when I commentated the first five live pancreas events on UFC Fight Pass. So nothing strong is getting set up, and he's getting dominated, pushed back, and about to get double-legged, it looks like, off the cage. Oh, he's got his neck and thinking that's good. Now, Oliver has got one uh, TKO by punches and one spinning back fist knockout, but all his other wins are by submission. Oliver is a submission fighter. He trains with a guy he says a similar coaching style to me. Take what works more like a pancreas hybrid crutch wrestling catch jitsu style as myself. And so he's cranking. He's leaning back. You could easily get tripped that left leg and then pass guard right away and into you know, a Von Flu choke. You don't guillotine standing guillotine leaning back. You do it like a squat. You also, you don't do it with the arm in because there's no way you're going to get that. Maybe I could with my grip and learning how to hip in and doing it a special way, but everyone else can do it. <laughs> okay, so with arm in, don't even bother. Um, so that's not good. And that's something Oliver should have recognized right away. He did kind of push the chin and the face we talked about earlier, so that's interesting. It has made its way into MMA, and maybe even I've shared some of the anti-cage tactics videos with Oliver. Perhaps you never know. 
overhook here. He's not winning the inside position. He's getting dominated. He's getting pushed back into the cage. He's not pummeling in. But even at a distance, where is the strong punches and kicks that one would expect? It has never been there. It hasn't been set up appropriately, and it hasn't been a hard round kick with forward intention, hard front kick with forward intention. A side kick like you saw me in my MMA clip earlier, front kicking the guy under the chin back in 1997, way before no one thought you could kick above the belt back then. So... I was able to make my Taekwondo skills in about 10 months of jujitsu and six months of combat wrestling with Dan Severn to back it up. Okay. But he's been around Oliver and a third MMA fight. He should have enough grappling and able to make his uh, karate work at this point. But a lot of it is mentality, holding your center, going with intention, uh, hitting with power at the right distance and things like that. Not playing tag. Not, it's an IKF the bad style of karate, real karate is old school Shotokan, old school Shotokan, linoleum floors, sweeping people hard, hitting people hard, some black eyes, bloody noses in the 70s and like the Machidas did and like the videos you can see of the Oda Machida in, in Shotokan competitions I have in some of my epic world playlists and stuff like that. So look at my playlist. Or it's Kyoko Shin. And I think Jesse has kind of badmouthed Kyoko Shin a bit in the past um, for what people have told me. And, you know, Daido Juku is an offshoot of Kyoko Shin. Azuma Sensei, may rest in peace, was an all-Japan champion. And then added in the boxing and the judo. And eventually a little bit of jiu-jitsu and Muay Thai and stuff as they were able to. And take what works. And that style was headbutts, elbows, throws, 30 seconds on the ground, etc. And originally I talked to him because I had these sparring rules and my karate go jujitsu rules, sparring rules in mind since I was 18 years old, where it has to involve all ranges, all ranges of combat. It's not a TMA, a total martial art, unless it has the STG method, striking, throwing, grappling method. If it doesn't involve striking, throwing, and takedowns, and grappling, then it's not a real style. And no, you can't make one range work if you have no clue about the other. You might get lucky, but you might get knocked out. Like if you're just a jiu-jitsu guy with no takedowns, right? You might need a head kick coming in. All right, here we are in the second round. Round kick from too far outside. That really bad right backside kick he's done in other fights and other sparrings, and it's no good. It's not my backside kick. It's definitely not Joe Rogan's backside kick. And he, here he's getting his back taken. It's not set up with his hands. He's been around Oliver long enough to know this. He has a popular YouTube channel. And it, here he's going for a double wrist like Kimura standing. Okay. Let's see what he does with this here. Does he just hip around the corner with his right foot? Hop and move like you, I show you in my DVD? No, he sits to the bad side half guard where it's very unlikely to finish this. And the guy can eventually straighten and even come an arm triangle around your arm by doing an extension, by straightening it out and coming around. So that's not very good. He doesn't have a good bend in the elbow. And, you know, you got to bend it and take it up the back like a small banana in the back of the head. Obviously, most of my, my videos in the past were on my Ketsujitsu style wrestling, mixing Kets wrestling and Jiu-Jitsu together, being a man of a thousand submissions. Oh, my, my third black belt. From Gogur Shevichin and Judo, Gene LeBeau in a grappling style, mixing Judo, Jiu-Jitsu, Sambo, catch wrestling. I'm known as a catch wrestler. And my fourth black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And I never chased belts. Perhaps that's why I got good. I worried about the fighting, real fighting application and ability. And he's just getting dominated here. Uh, there you go. see a seatbelt on his wrist. I could even go behind his back and get a seatbelt, eating some ground and pound. Now he did get to his knees. Let's see if he can manage to just get up by luck. And he does. Now, we see almost the same position here where Rokas got his neck snatch. Oh, but he did. Good job, Jesse. He weaved his right elbow. It took him two seconds. But he finally weaved, it, weaved the elbow in, faced the opponent, and got the underhook, and now we got separation again. So obviously some of the things Oliver has taught Jesse are good, and some things have kicked in. But you see it's totally mostly a defensive fighter where it's like I'm going to kick from too far outside. I'm not even willing to come into proper suki, proper punch distance, I'm scared to come the distance. Well, then you have no takedown defense. You have no karate. You have no Muay Thai. You have no Dutch kickboxing. Can't defend the takedown? No karate. Okay. 
No takedown defense, no crowding. So you have to understand all ranges of combat. Takedown and he's mounted right away. That's not great, right? He should know better by now if it's at least his third MMA fight, which I believe in his own words. He said, I just had a fight in the cage, and we've never seen that video, I don't believe. And so this, even though a lot of people are thinking this is his first, is at least his third and possibly his sixth or seventh. I really don't know. Jesse, I would like to come on your channel. I would like to try to help you become better, and Oliver for that matter, with new striking and switching stance and blitzing. But you have to know how to go with intention to actually hurt your opponent. You have to have intention to hit with power and actually hurt your opponent. It can't be just defensive there and the overhook getting cage controlled with your back against the cage as we see at the end of the second round. I don't want this to be seemingly too mean, but just because you have subscribers like Jesse, Icy Mike, and Rokas, none of them can fight. They're not fighters. They're no good. You're either a fighter to an extent, born or not, and what you've gone through in life, and then it can also be trained into you. I was too nice before, but after months and months, when I joined Milicic's camp and getting my ass beat by the heavyweight champion in the world that was 6'8", 300 pounds, Tim Sylvia cut down to 265, and other real beasts like that, unlike Rokas, who after not being a beast, calls himself a beast, which is ridiculous, in the video following his horrible performance in a second MMA fight, I am willing to talk, but you don't want to talk to people and collaborate with people that will say what is what. Because I have the real experience to know what is good fighting and bad fighting, what is good skill and bad skill. And after decades of training in karate, you should be able to apply more of it. After five years, supposedly, Rokas of training MMA, jiu-jitsu, kickboxing, functional martial arts, where's the functional? And now you're claiming you're a beast. No, you're slightly better than you used to be when you were just an Aikido guy who wasn't good at that. Bad backside kick again, a round kick with no power. He's claiming his round kicks have a lot of power. They don't. Snappy round kicks, I'll eat that on my form all day. That's not Muay Thai style. It's not kickboxing style. It's not Dutch style. He got nailed with a left hook there. This guy should go boom with his hands. Uh, actually, Jesse's really lucky this guy didn't start blitzing with his hands uh, like he should have. Shoots, takes him down again, gets some left hooks in. Uh, it looks like he's getting some left hooks in again. Jesse's out of position again. Uh, guy getting out wrestled again, about to get his leg trip, outside leg trip. Kosotogaki could have spun him off the cage there for the other guy, you know, who's just an amateur himself. But this guy has at least a bit of killer instinct and forward pressure. Forward pressure. That's why most of the Wing Chun guys can't fight. Chappy, happy. Wing Chun was forward pressure. That's why I'm the guy who landed Bruce Lee's favorite technique, a straight blast in MMA. No one else has. Okay. At least pro MMA, a real sanctioned fight, and at the highest level versus champion. Okay, so now Jesse again, defensive, pushed against the cage. Overhook, stops the takedown a bit, got an underhook on the other side. But what's going on? There's no cage turnarounds. There's no anti-cage tactics by Dan the Wolfman. None of this, uh, like I talked about, like Chinzo with the throw shove or the head twist like Nagato did. None of that's happening. Or you have to pummel in and kick off the cage and out wrestle with a high underhook. You have to learn wrestling. You have to learn jiu-jitsu. You have to learn catch wrestling. You have to learn boxing. You have to learn Muay Thai. You have to learn Dutch kickboxing. You have to learn everything. But most importantly, guys, if you train something and you're like, well, I'm not really a fighter type. i got to be honest with myself. It's because you're not going forward. It's because you're showing fear. It's because you have no intention in your strikes. If I'm just trying to tag you and barely at that, at a foot outside of the end of the foot and fist range, you're playing air tag. You're playing IKF bad karate bullshit. Real karate, unfortunately, gets a bad rap because then we have people representing karate that are not karate masters. If you can't fight with it, if you don't know how to hit hard and you don't know how to hit the other opponent and you don't know how to set things up, you can't. Years ago, I, I sparred at a Kyoko Shin school in LA. There was an 18-year-old that twice he hit, landed round kicks on me, and luckily he kind of pulled and did them at a high skipping off angle, but he could have knocked me out. I think he was an All-Japan champion or became All-Japan champion shortly thereafter because I've talked about him before. I just visited once, like on a Saturday in Little Tokyo in LA, once or twice. But, I mean, there are people that can hit and punch with intention. Now, the footwork at Kyoko Shin isn't very good, and you could take that from Shotokan and other things. I'm not that experienced. I've watched some Gojo Ru and Ishin Ru classes and stuff, but I never really trained in those styles. So let me know down below what other styles are really worthwhile to have good techniques. We see Jesse getting shoved back again in the cage. Was there anything to talk about other than bad kicks from outside range that are never going to hit anyway? 
If a punch and a kick doesn't need the person to block, you don't throw it. If it's not going to hit them, you don't throw it unless it's a setup, like a double jab. The first one's from outside to go here, and then I do a long hook after it or something like that. Unless there's a setup, a reason for doing it, don't punch and kick if it's not going to hit the guy. Okay? So... I don't like that these YouTubers are trying to make it like, I just tried MMA and it's okay to suck. No, MMA is the real deal. If you're going to do it, train and do it. If you're going to claim you can teach a style, you better be able to fight with it. You better have some real fighting ability. I like Jesse. I would love to collaborate with you. I hope It would be nice if you didn't take this as a personal insult, but like, oh, yeah, my mindset's completely messed up. I'll never get good. No matter how many MMA fights you don't put on your channel and lose, you won't be good unless you get the mindset. You have to train with Oliver long enough to get the mindset. I hope Oliver and Camp wins this fight tonight. I, of course, hope Lyoto Machida uh, wins this fight tonight. He's getting up there in age like me. Um, and I hope I get back on the mats. I haven't done a lot, guys, since my knee really, really, really has been hurt the last year and then like eight, seven, eight months ago since my last role against a jiu-jitsu champion, but I just had knee surgery a month ago. I'm trying, so I'm going to give you some breakdown videos. Again, it's not all to be mean. Please get in the comments. Have you had trouble making your martial arts work? Does talking about the mindset and forward intention and pressure and uh, intention to hit and maybe structure with your spine and having a good base to throw any strike from? Not this leaning back front, the Mawashi Gary stuff that Jesse thinks is good, that Rokas thinks is good, that, that no, that does not belong in MMA. Okay, unless it's super fast at the right distance. But then I've trained with Kyoko Shin guys that can kind of do those more angled kicks or up and over last second kind of kicks. And they can hit even if it's a snappy kick to the temple with power, even if it's not the full Muay Thai style round kick. And where's the front kicks to the lower ball that I taught videos on in 2012 and then we saw Conor McGregor piercing ball front kicks and stuff. Where is that stuff? So just because someone has subscriber base doesn't mean that they're good at their martial arts. It doesn't mean that you should learn fighting from them or even that their opinions about actual fighting and self-defense matter so much if they've spent five years or 20 years doing it. So learn fighting from fighters. If I want to learn kata and rah-rah, I could go to Jesse and that would be great. I mean, I did kata, taekwondo, pumze forms myself. I was pretty good, but not like the Olympic level. So beyond w winning a gold in the Olympics, I don't even think that stuff really matters. You have to be able to fight with it. You have to be able to not have the fear in the moment of the fight. And if you're leaning back and not, and just going backwards and letting yourself get dominated and letting yourself get taken down and you're not going forward with anything that's meaningful punches or kicks and you're not setting anything up and you're not setting those kicks up and those backside kicks have no power, you're not really doing anything. So this isn't just about Jesse, but it's about everyone else on their journeys, which should be more dedicated journeys to actually be able to fight and have the proper martial, martial, what does it mean? Martial mindset, should you ever need it. Myself, I've got to go work an armed security guard job tonight at a different one and i do that basically every day and i have the real world experience i teach to you on my four and a half hour competitive street jiu-jitsu dvd on bjj fanatics please subscribe thumbs up get down there in the comments to fight the algo monster and let me know if any of this mindset stuff and distance stuff and intention stuff has helped you thank you everyone and be safe jesse can we collaborate let's talk buddy i didn't mean to be mean and apologies for the video a couple years ago